Catskill. This is Brooklyn Gardens. Today we're in a greenhouse and we're going to be doing a uh, grafting video. And uh, Dave Helms is going to be um, sharing some of his technique that he's done for uh, around 40 years or more. And we'll talk to him how long he's done it. And we're going to go through, people are interested in grafting and they'd love to graft themselves, but it, you know, re realistically it's not something that uh, you can do at home. But it's interesting to know what uh, what it takes to do a, a good conifer graft. So let's get started. We're out in the field before our grafting and we're collecting cyan wood for um, the grafting that we're going to be doing. So I'm standing next to a Pinus heldrichii, used to be called Leucodermis, called Schmidt. And um, th this one here is probably 40 years old at least. And you can just see how, you know, how nice it is. It's no more than three feet tall, I would say, when you think, Dave. Oh, yeah. And um, so we're going to collect some cyan wood off of that. So I'm just going to let you go ahead and um, see what type of cyan wood we, we have on it, what you would collect as far as uh -huh. something that will make a nice uh, nice tree. Because there is some, you're not just looking for any old piece, you're looking for certain things, well, right? Well, basically, uh, a lot of guys like the terminals. Right. And they're usually a little thicker. And then there's a lot of times there's uh, laterals, which might line up better with your understock. So I do, I do maybe cut a little of this and a little of that at, and to, to take back. Mm -hmm. I like these pruners here. They don't crush the cambium. They do a nice clean cut. Nice and sharp. And uh, yeah, most of the time I use thin. my Felcos, right. but they're a little more clunky in these needle nose. Well, that's good, good advice because yeah. a lot of times I use my Felcos and... Yeah. Yeah, no, but that's a good idea to have a something yeah. a little sharper and... And then a lot of times, with, you know, cleaning your understock, you can pull it, but if it doesn't come, you don't want to tear it up so much. And these, you can get right up tight and take the needles right off. And that way you don't destroy any of the bark or the cambium and get it nice and clean. A lot of times it's already pre-done. So then you just prepare your grafting site and that. And now we'll just take these back to the greenhouse and line up what we have for understock. So these will be used in our video today for um, grafting on. So we'll be back in the greenhouse in a little bit. Okay. Let's gra grab a couple more um, understocks. We are gonna cut this feeling blue to put on an abstract type understock. But I was thinking it'd probably grow too fast and cover up the, the structure of the understock. So then we looked over, and here's a hedgehog, the banning. Yeah. Let's go, let's so, go over there. And... Yeah. So this probably would be more uh, inclined to use for the understock that we have. So what we do is we'll look again, and here's a nice one-year growth. And on the abstract understock we have, We'll probably end up uh, putting uh, three scions on. So I kind of look, I cut a little more, and then I'll clean them up when we get in uh, into the greenhouse. So the abstract, um, you're talking about something that's a little more yeah, cur instead cur of the traditional, yeah. just your undersign that you're doing production type grafts mm -hmm. or what have you. Sometimes it's fun with the little right. stuff to bend some of your Deodora understock. Yep. And that's what I brought today. And all three share. of these will go on that same understock, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And I did quite a few last year and they're they're fun. Yeah. Uh, the bonsai people don't like it because they say my curves are too swirly and yeah, swelly yeah, and yeah. not hard right angles and stuff. And but I go, for the average collector, oh, they, yeah. get, they get three trees on one plus like for you, you're trying to develop some more understock, and you'll get uh, more uh, or, or cyan wood yeah. uh, rather than understock. So yeah, yeah and it's an interesting piece. I go, oh, it's not bonsai. It's a, it's just for a pot, right. a terracotta, yeah. put on your porch. Yeah. You know, it's an interesting piece. And when we'll, when we get back, I'll show you. Yeah, that's that's nice. <laughs> All right. Okay. We might. So 
we're getting started with our drafting process and Dave's going over thing. I'm going to let him do most of the narrating on this and um, I'll be alongside asking some questions. And uh, so I know you were just cleaning up some pine understock. You yeah. got cedrus mm -hmm. here, uh -huh. two cedars. So these are kind of some little fancy, which I like to put on the abstract. Uh, so eventually you do your top graphs, eventually you'll remove all this and you'll have a flow and then you'll have, uh, this is a little dwarf. I like to name Scott. And, uh, then I have other ones called Uve and, uh, St. Catharines I like to put up and with the bigger root stock it pushes for better cyan wood in the future to do just ground grafts. This one here is called Schoolhouse 91. It's a not, another kind of weeper. I don't really know the history of that one that other than it was found in Oregon at a school Schoolhouse 91. And uh, so anyway so that that so then with the just traditional low graphs, I'll do that. So what you need, I use just a straight Tina, straight blade. That's the brand, right? The brand, mm -hmm. it's, my, it's German made. I've had this knife forever and ever. You can see that it's pr pretty tapered down from honing it. You need a good stone to keep it sharp. I just go that way a little bit that way and that way and that's what I like to do there. I had a Tina folding knife but it was a little heavier and and I still have it and these were throwaways at one time 20 20 dollar knives now they're up to 86 bucks or something but it'll last your lifetime. A lot of people graph down in here and I, and hold the knife like that, draw it towards you. Me, I like the tip because it's sharp. And when you're working on little wood, the tip is what I mostly have the contact with. And that. And you can you can do hold your cyan, bring your knife, and as you pull. Keep it flat, stable, nice, level, whoops, sorry, level, flat. And then I like to put a tail on it. So let put a little tail like that. So there it is there. This piece of wood here has probably had, I don't know, 100,000 grafts done on it. And I just cut that off so it's a nice clean. Don't want anything mutilated and clean. Uh, it's nice down into the understock. Yeah, cut yeah, right. yeah. Nice clean cut. Nice straight and stir. Then come here, hold the understock. Draw the knife towards you. Cut right here. So then you have this little tail. The piece of cyan slides into there. Line it all up, and it just cradles it. These are grafting rubbers. Um, I was only able to get like six inch, so a lot longer. They used to make them out of rubber. I don't know what this is made out of. Old milk cartons or something. <laughs> not my, not my favorite. <laughs> but I've gotten used to them. Maybe they're low grade rubber. Uh huh. So what I do first, I hold that, I line it up. And I bring it around, and there it's cr <laughs> cradled. So then the next thing you want to do, you tap it down so the cambium lines up, and then it, and then you just start working your way uh, down. Some people start at the top, work their way down. I like to come up here, and uh, then. You can see it's lined up, get the air pockets out, around and around and around and then around.
on my finger. A lot of people don't do this, kind of old school style. And pull the tail up like that. So basically I line most of it up on this side. I, I probably, this piece of sign probably would have worked, but one side, I don't worry about two sides. It, it fills in nice and, uh, and there's a last, last year's graft and, uh, I, I double graft this because I had more cyan wood than I did understock. Story of my life. So is that still um, some understock on the top there? Or yeah, I left yeah. I left a little bit on. Uh, what did they do on the pruners? Pretty right. Oh, the little ones. Yeah. Uh, right here. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. Yeah. So I left the understock on for a year and uh, just a little bit, and I, you can cut that out now. So this, I'll get a stake on this and this will tumble down with the interesting on, foliage. Yeah. yeah. And then same with the Scott, I'm gonna leave this on. Yeah. Cause this is a gift for somebody. There so, is an advantage to leaving, especially smaller dwarfs and miniatures. Yeah. Yeah, to leave the understuck on for a um, little longer than normal. Yeah. yeah. And, and Avies, I always, uh, if you look, this, uh -huh. uh, this is a three year old. Yeah. Mike Stern's con color. Still got the understock uh -huh, on. I leave it on yeah. until uh, maybe it'll get it into the ground and be stable and all right. that. But it's nice and healthy yeah. right now. Yep, and it's then very healthy. this can come off anytime. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you let it go 10 or 20 years, I, then, you know, right. hey, we could just bury this, but but you're creating a, uh -huh. a nice, strong plant. Down and there. a lot of people whack it right off. I know. I, know type like, thing. I know. I've done so, that. so the final thing what I like to do with this, and I didn't, I didn't fire it up, and it's old school. A lot of guys are using uh, the paint and that type of thing, but I still use a grafting lantern. I use Throwberg wax. I heat it up and uh, melt it and then I'll paint. And I paint high, so I seal it at the top and I seal it at the top, bottom. And that way the sun breaks it down. It's a no brainer, I don't have to go back. I used uh, that uh, green, I don't know, acrylic stuff in uh, one year and I had to go back with a razor blade and cut all the rubbers out. Mm. The sun breaks this down, but sun breaks that down. And the, and another nice thing is too, the reason why I tie that kind of a rubber band is you just go like that, pull, and boom, it's off. So I'm gonna keep it on for now. Cause Gil will grow this one on. Yeah. Yeah. Another plant, that's what I need. Uh -huh. I do need. <laughs> oh yeah, we all need. <laughs> we all need plants. Now, so with this one, Cedrus Diodora understock, uh, like we went and we we're thinking about feeling blue, but I think feeling blue will outgrow the structure of this. So we found this hedgehog, Labani, and we'll clean it up a little bit here. Same thing. We'll find the. Uh, a nice grafting site on it. So we clean these needles and I don't like to tear those either because they'll open up wounds. Kind of rips when you do that. Uh -huh. It rips the bark off the yeah, so branch. You hold it real flat and take some buds off and this type of thing. And get your knife. Make sure your knife's clean. If you use a lot of pines, it'll be sticky, cause drag. And then same thing, you just pull and open it up. And sometimes I go back. Oops. <laughs> my fingers are all <laughs> just sticky from those darn pine. Yeah. So, and then put my tail on it, back, back tail. And a lot of times I don't like, I make sure it's nice, clean, cut here. So there's your cyan. Find a good grafting site on here. I'm going to go back down. This was last year failure out of about 10. 
So then I just drag the knife down. And I like to put it on the top side. You know, that gibber Where the kind of angles uh -huh. away. Yeah. Or the branch does it. Yep. Yeah. And pull it in. And see, it just naturally stays in that spot. So it's, it's like that, an anchor. Uh huh. Little anchor, little toe, heel, heel cutting thing, kind of. And then just same thing, sew up the bottom. The bottom's, to me, is the most valuable spot for the connection. And then just work your way up. As you work up, see, it's off. So you just keep lining it up, working, working. Perfect. So a lot of guys, grafters, um, they leave that whole flat bond, don't they? Yeah. I, the first person that taught me, he he cut it off. Uh huh. So he always knew that the graft was taken because this end would kick out. It was the butt ugliest graft I've ever seen. So Gordy Hogren, the guy that introduced. Um, Burgundy jewels Jewel. and uh, your favorite blue uh, uh, what am blue cloak. Oh, blue, oh, did he? Oh, yeah. he introduced that. Uh huh. Blue cloak. Okay. He and I were dinking around together, and we kind of learned about this type of graph. Uh huh. So I want air around here, and so I I'm taking gonna, some branches off. Uh huh. I want that to be opened up. And then eventually I'll probably even come and, because I don't want everything to just go to the terminals. I want to thank you for joining us for this crafting video and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's of interest to people to see how, you know, grafting's done. Grafting of conifers, there's different grafting. Maples are grafted and fruit trees are grafted. But, uh, and the reason we do it that way is that you can get an exact clone of an unusual rare slow growing even miniature conifer and they do that with, with that's why they do it with fruit too you get something that's you know really um is a, a type of fruit that uh, say like an apple tree that people and they find the flavor of it's just right and everything and they can clone it exactly so again thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the next one